Now, with just a couple of more months to go until the marketing campaign truly ramps up for Deadpool 3 via Disney and Marvel Studios, there's been a lot of drama happening behind the scenes with, of course, Ryan Reynolds, director Sean Levy, writers Rhett Reese and Paul Wernick, and the whole Joy Behar situation associated with Bob Iger and Kevin Feige at large. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you all so very much for the great and kind support. So, one thing about the whole Deadpool and Wolverine situation, by the way, we are getting a new trailer next month, so stay tuned for that. There's a lot of workings by Disney right now to attach it to the Planet of the Apes film, so there's a lot of things going on with that. But interestingly enough, we know that Deadpool 3 has had a handful of drama-driven situations related to the third act of the film, to the marketing campaign, and it doesn't stop there. Now, one thing about Joy Behar is that she serves as one of the talkers of the Walt Disney Company. She is, of course, one of the many faces of the Walt Disney Company that will defend them through and through unless someone betrays her at one given point in time such as what happened with the 10 million dollar payout deal going sour let's discuss now specifically all right we already know that the marketing campaign for Deadpool 3 is already pretty much destroyed at this point and it's not needed to begin with I mean all you really need is a good trailer you need a very good solid second full trailer that by the way will focus on Wolverine that's all you need for the marketing campaign you don't need these actors like Hugh and Ryan to go on the nonsense view show or the Jimmy Kimmel live show to which they all bailed out from now, moving on forward, with the current Deadpool 3 drama only getting worse for those like Bob Iger and Kevin Feige as Ryan Reynolds, Sean Levy, and others stand up against Disney to prevent DEI from spilling into the third act, one major development has much to do with Joy Behar taking legal action against Reynolds after he stepped down from appearing on The View for this June to promote the film. A significant update to the entire situation involves how just recently Behar is now putting full blame on Ryan Reynolds for the one responsible of her losing out on her $10 million payout by the Walt Disney Company that they are now refusing to pay her that was promised by Bob Iger and the rest of the board where Reynolds was going to originally appear on five whole episodes of The View doing one-on-one -on -one interviews with Joy Behar and even Whoopi Goldberg dressed up as Deadpool with a special guest appearance from Hugh Jackman and other cast members and creators. Ryan was the first one to step down due to his issues with Joy pushing the conversation and the plans of the conversation to swing to the importance of DEI and is now already informing Reynolds, agent manor, and manager of course, as well as his entire team, that she will be taking legal action against him unless a certain resolution is made. Joy is also preparing to take legal action against the Walt Disney Company for making a false promise of her $10 million payout for the five episode format featuring appearances of Ryan Reynolds and Hugh Jackman as Deadpool and Wolverine. In addition to all of this, Behar already gave the heads up to the Disney higher-ups, including Bob Iger, that she is taking legal action against Reynolds and his entire team and plans to go after Disney afterward in the wake of all the drama surrounding the marketing campaign of Deadpool 3. Now, to Behar's mind, she reportedly believed that the appearances of these actors and creators would rake in massive ratings across the board for the months of June and July, and hence creating new fans of The View, which is delusional. This was also a belief by Bob Iger, which was obviously delusional as well and out of touch with reality in the end. Already after a recent emergency meeting that Disney held, Bob Iger has been pressuring Ryan Reynolds, agent and manager, to reason with him to get him on the view to prevent the drama from igniting further down the road before, the re before of course, the release of Deadpool 3. However, Reynolds is not standing down as the focus that, of course, both Joy and Bob Iger are very stubborn about are the focus on DEI. Behar's legal warnings against Reynolds and his team, of course, are already described to be worrying Disney and putting them into full panic mode about this creating a chain reaction, especially after Reynolds also dropped out of the Jimmy Kimmel Live show for June. Behar is already on a rampage that has been so loud within ABC, it has been rattling throughout all divisions of the Walt Disney Company behind the scenes. 
Now, Reynolds is reportedly aware of Behar's legal warnings and moves and is still not budging at all, and already has his own legal team pre-prepared, of course, for when the time arrives if he has to cross that bridge. Now, guys, let me stop here real quick. Now, look, we know that Disney is in the hot seat. We have multiple people calling them out these days, and especially what happened back in 2023 where you had South Park Studios, Elon Musk, The Daily Wire really putting them in the hot seat. It couldn't be any better than that. Now, 2024, you know, you're dealing with a lot of drama related to many different productions. Even Elon Musk today called out Disney and, and actually said excited to join at Disney as their chief DEI officer. Can't wait to work with Bob Iger and Kathleen Kennedy to make their content more woke, even the Linguini. So that was on Elon Musk's Twitter account slash X account. And again, they keep getting called out day in and day out. It's not looking good for Bob Iger. It's not looking good for the board. And the whole Nelson Peltz situation is the new 2024 problem for the Walt Disney Company. We'll have to wait and see what happens this month, by the way, with that whole scenario. If not this month, it's eventually gonna happen, I believe, where Pelt gets a seat and others get a seat as well. So, moving onwards, all right, on top of all of that, as the Deadpool 30 reshoots are set to begin, by the end of this month, lasting until the end of May sometime, Iger is still forcing elements of DEI that Reynolds and crew are still fighting and battling to this day. Reynolds is also beginning to take action back at Joy Behar that is just beginning to start a tug of war situation behind the scenes at the Disney company. So again, Ryan and crew, they've had some wins, they've had some losses. Thankfully, there's been more wins than losses, all right? So the wins outweigh the losses at this point when it comes to how many scenarios Disney caved into based on the demands of Sean Levy, Ryan Reynolds, and of course, uh, the writers like Paul Wernick and Rhett Reese. So that's the good thing. But the only bad thing is that they're still very stubborn and very concrete about their plans of inserting some DEI elements into the third act of Deadpool 3. And if they do that, I really do believe that you're going to end up with a good, solid two acts of this movie. And then the third act is going to go downhill where you're going to be wondering to yourself what in the world happened with this film where people will begin to leave the movie theater if it ends up that way. Hopefully Reynolds and others really just keep their ground and really decide to keep pushing against Disney to the point where they cave more. So overall, the whole Behar situation is blown out of proportion. I think that she really is just delusional. She is very self-absorbed. She is very egotistical. She is so egotistical to the point that she believes that Ryan and Hugh stepping on the view would increase their ratings in the long term. That's just insane. Now, yes, they were looking at June and July as like a launching pad for their ratings increase, and then they believed it would stay that way. Once the actors are gone, even if they did get a you know ratings increase, it would just decline because nobody watches The View. No Marvel fan watches that garbage. And that's just a given fact. I mean, let's just really be real about that. So overall, I would love to hear what you all have to say about this situation below in the comments. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel. And I will catch you guys later. And